Hello students today we can see the topic fruit from the chapter sexual reproduction in flowering plants what is fruit the mature ovary is said to be as fruit we have seen in the previous class that after fertilization ovules develop into the seed at the same time the ovary develops into the fruit okay so after fertilization when the ovule matures into a seed the fruit will be developed from the ovary it, it takes place simultaneously okay the wall of the fruit is called the pericarp so what is pericarp the fruit wall is called pericarp the wall of the ovary will be developing into the wall of the fruit and it is called the pericarp okay the mature pericarp may be fleshy or dry accordingly the fruit can be classified into fleshy fruit or a dry fruit fleshy fruit means the fruit in which the pericarp is fleshy in nature for example guava orange mango etc these fruits are fleshy in nature okay the pericarp is fleshy in nature and so they are said to be as fleshy fruit okay then what are dry fruits sir the fruits in which the pericarp is dry they are said to be as dry fruit for example groundnut mustard are examples of dry fruit because here the pericarp is dry in nature okay we have seen that the seeds follow various mechanisms for their dispersal isn't it similarly we can say many fruits also have evolved mechanism for dispersal of the seeds okay in most of the plants by the time the fruit develops other floral parts like the sepals petals and stamen degenerate and fall off okay why they fall off because they are not involved in fruit formation mainly the ovary is involved in fruit formation okay so the parts like sepals petals and stamens degenerate and fall off now the fruits can also be classified as true fruit and false fruit now what is false fruit in fruits like apple strawberry and cashew the thalamus contribute to fruit formation normally the ovary develops into the fruit isn't it but here the thalamus also contributes to the fruit formation okay so this fruit is said to be as false fruit okay what are true fruits fruits that develop only from ovary are said to be as true fruits okay fruits which develop only from ovary are called true fruits for example mango is a true fruit okay next is parthenocarpic fruit the fruits develop from the ovary after fertilization isn't it after fertilization the ovules mature into the seed and the ovary mature into the fruit isn't it but there are fruits which develop without fertilization also so the fruits which develop without fertilization are called parthenocarpic fruit for example banana this parthenocarpy can also be induced artificially by the application of growth hormones last year we have studied about growth hormones isn't it so when we apply such growth hormones they can produce parthenocarpic fruits so growth hormones like auxin can be applied for the production of parthenocarpic fruit in tomatoes the fruits which are produced by parthenocarpy normally are seedless they do not have a seed okay even banana do not have seed they are having small seeds in that but it is a non fertile one okay because it is produced without fertilization so seedless fruits can be produced by uh, parthenocarpy by uh, artificial means by the application of growth hormones okay seeds are produced inside the fruits isn't it how many seeds will be there in each fruit it varies from fruit to fruit isn't it suppose if you are taking a mango fruit each mango fruit contains only one seed in it but if you take the orchid fruit it contains thousands of tiny seeds in it okay similarly some of the parasitic plants like orobanke striga which you are seeing in the picture it also contains large number of seeds inside the fruit okay and you all are familiar with ficus plant also isn't it the ficus fruit uh, 
uh, will be having large number of seed in it so you you know the uh, size of a ficus tree it will be occupying a large area isn't it so a large number of flowers that means inflorescence and seeds will be produced in them you can imagine how many billion seeds are produced by such uh, ficus plants okay so here also very minute seeds a large number of minute seeds will be produced inside each uh, ficus fruit okay so the number of seeds which are produced within the fruit will be varying from plant to plant okay generally seeds are produced after fertilization isn't it but in some plants the seeds can be produced without fertilization so that process is called apomixis so what is apomixis production of seeds without fertilization is called apomixis for example in some species of asteraceae and grasses apomixis occurs asteraceae example we can say sunflower chrysanthemum here in picture you are able to see it uh, or uh, some forms of daisy plants so these are examples of asteraceae okay so in some species of asteraceae and grasses the seeds can be produced without fertilization and that process is called uh, apomixis actually apomixis is a form of asexual reproduction but it mimics sexual reproduction okay it is a form of asexual reproduction because no fertilization is occurring but it mimics a sexual reproduction okay yes in some species how this apomixis occurs the diploid egg cell is formed how a diploid egg cell will be formed without undergoing reduction division normally the gamete that is the egg cell will be formed only after meiosis isn't it but here without undergoing meiosis a diploid egg cell will be formed okay and this diploid egg cell will develop into the embryo without fertilization normally egg cell will be haploid and it will be undergoing fertilization with the male gamete as a result zygote will be formed a diploid zygote will be formed but here the egg cell is diploid in nature because it is formed without a reduction division that is without meiosis okay and thus that diploid egg cell will and will develop into the embryo without fertilization and this process is called apomixis okay this is the diagrammatic representation to show apomixis here you can see the egg which is formed here is diploid in nature okay without a reduction division the egg is formed so it is already diploid in nature and these are the two male gametes and it is released here this male gamete can fuse with this polar nuclei and here the egg as it is already diploid in nature it automatically it develops into the embryo okay but naturally what happens this is the egg cell which is haploid in nature this is the male gamete one male gamete here it fuses with the polar nuclei another male gamete you can see here it fuses with the egg and the zygote will be formed okay that is the natural sexual pathway but in apomixis uh, there is no fertilization the uh, male gamete will not fuse with the egg without fusion the diploid egg will directly develop into the embryo okay children next is polyembryony what is polyembryony poly means many embryo means many embryos okay for example in citrus and mango plants some of the new cell are cells which is present inside the ovule surrounding the embryo sac they divide and they protrude into the embryo sac and they develop into the embryo okay so in citrus and mango varieties some of the new cell are cells will be protruding into the embryo sac and thus they develop into embryos okay so each ovule will be having many embryos inside the such a condition is said to be as polyembryony 
okay so what is polyembryony occurrence of more than one embryo in a seed is referred to as polyembryony so here you can see this is the normal embryo and this is these are the new cell or cells that develop into embryo and then they protrude into the they enter into the embryo sac and thus they develop into embryo so many embryos will be seen within a seed and such a condition is said to be as polyembryony okay various hybrid varieties of food and vegetable crops are extensively cultivated throughout the world Cultivation of such hybrid plants has increased the productivity tremendously. One of the problem of hybrids is that the hybrid seeds have to be produced every year. Why it should be produced every year? The hybrid seeds which the farmers buy and sow it will develop into a plant and they produce, they grow and they produce the seeds. If that seeds are taken and sown, the plants will not show the hybrid characters the characters will be segregated okay so when we take the seed of a hybrid plant and sow it what will happen the progeny which is developing will not maintain hybrid character the characters will be segregated moreover the production of hybrid seed is costly hence it is too expensive for the farmers to buy the hybrid seeds every year. Okay. So if these hybrids are made into apomictic seeds, there will not be any segregation of characters in the hybrid progeny. Okay. So that the farmers can keep on using the hybrid seeds to produce new crop plants year after year they no need to buy the hybrid seeds every year okay once if they buy and sow it the hybrid plant which is growing from that will produce the seeds which they can store it and they can use it every year okay and because of the importance of apomixes in hybrid seed industry now active research is going on in many laboratories around the world to understand the genetics of apomixes and to transfer this apomictic genes into hybrid varieties we suppose if we are able to succeed in transferring the apomictic genes into hybrid varieties then it will be a boon to the agricultural industries and to the farmers okay children